Today we are going to learn how to solve quadratic simultaneous equations where one of the equations is quadratic and the other one is linear. We always start by making sure that the linear equation has the y or the x, the subject of the formula. And once we've got that, we are going to substitute it into the quadratic equation. In our case, we are lucky because y is already the subject, so we don't have to do anything to the y. What we are going to do next is replace the y value in the quadratic equation with whatever the actual y value is in the second equation. So the ones that are highlighted are the same. They are equal to each other. So we might as well just plug in the 2x plus 15 into the first equation. If we do that, we are going to have 2x plus 15 is equal to x squared. Next, we're going to make sure that everything is only on one side of the equation, left or right. I prefer to keep the x squared as positive, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 15 from both sides. Now, this will give us x squared minus 2x minus 15. It looks like this equation can be factorized. We can write down the factors of minus 15, minus 1, 15, minus 3, 5, 1, and minus 15, 3, and minus 5. From these four factor pairs, we are going to choose the one that has a sum of minus 2, and that is 3 and minus 5. So 3 times minus 5 is minus 15, and 3 plus minus 5 is minus 2. So we can factorize it now, where we have x plus 3 and x minus 5. To find the first set of solutions, we make each of the brackets equal to 0, so x plus 3 is equal to 0, then the solution for the x will be minus 3, and when x minus 5 is equal to 0, then the solution for the x is 5. Now that we have one set of solution, we've got the x's, we can substitute into one of the equations equation 1 or equation 2 to work out the corresponding y values. Both of these situations have y the subject of the formula, y equals x squared and y equals 2x plus 15. So both of them will be quite easy to substitute. And actually it doesn't matter which one you pick, equation 1 or equation 2. The solution will be the same. Always look for the simplest one. When x is equal to minus 3, we have y equals minus 3 squared. We have replaced the x value in the first equation. This will give us y equals 9. We will do the same thing when x is equal to 5. y is equal to 5 squared and this will be 25. And now we've got the other solution. And finally, we can write down the final solution. x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to 9, and x is equal to 5, y is equal to 25. Sometimes a question might ask you to find out the coordinate points. In that case, the coordinate points would be minus 3, 9, and 5, 25. In question number 2, none of the variables are the subject of the formula. We must start with the linear equation and choose whether we want to make y the subject or we want to make x the subject. It's completely up to us whether it's going to be the y or the x. Always go for the one that is easier to work with. For example, we might have something like x plus 7y is equal to 10. 
In this case, we can clearly see that x will be easier to make the subject. In the second question, I'm going to make y the subject. I will rewrite this equation as y equals x plus 3. Now again we have the y the subject, so y is equal to x plus 3. Next, we are going to replace the y in the second equation, in the quadratic equation, with x plus 3. The reason we do that is because we want to have only one unknown letter in the whole equation, because then we can solve it. If we have two unknowns, x and the y, the only way we can solve it if we have another equation, so we can merge it together, just like we've done in the first question. The quadratic equation will become x plus 3 plus 3x equals x squared minus 2. Here the x plus 3 is our y, but now we have everything in terms of x. Next, we will simplify this and make sure that everything is only on one side of the equation. On the left hand side we have 4x plus 3 equals x squared minus 2. I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides and I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get rid of both of those right hand side terms. Minus x squared plus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. As I mentioned in the previous question, I prefer the x squared term to be a positive term. In order to make it a positive, we are going to times everything across by minus 1. Now we can check if it factorizes. If it doesn't factorize, we would have to solve the quadratic formula or we would have to use solving by completing the square. We can write down the factors of minus 5. Well, that's easy because 5 is a prime number, so it has exactly two factors, 1 and itself. We have minus 1 times 5 is equal to minus 5, and we have 1 times minus 5. Out of these two pairs, we are going to choose the one that adds up to minus 4. So we are lucky that we can factorize this as well. Factorizing this, we will have x plus 1, x minus 5 equals to 0. Making the first bracket equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, we will have one of the solutions, x is equal to minus 1. Making the second bracket equal to 0, we have another solution, x is equal to 5. Again, we have the solutions for the x. Next step, we have to find out the corresponding y values. The easiest one to substitute the x value to work out the y is going to be the first equation, y equals x plus 3. And then we have y equals minus 1 plus 3. And the solution for the y is equal to 2. Following the same method, we have y equals 5 plus 3. That is 8. Now we have everything that we need to write down the final solution. When x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 5, y is equal to 8. Looking at the final question, again we're going to make y the subject of the formula. I'm going to label them equation 1 and equation 2. Rewriting equation 1 will give us y equals 2x minus 6. Now we have equation 2, x squared plus y squared is equal to 72. So it happens that y is the easiest to make the subject of the formula again. But that's not always the case. And now we're going to substitute 2x minus 6 into the second equation where the y is highlighted with green. This will give us x squared plus 
2x minus 6 all squared equals 7 to 2. Notice that I have used brackets. It's very, very important that where you've got the letter squared, you keep the brackets because everything is squared. Next, we will have to use our skill of multiplying out two brackets. And of course, we want to keep everything on one side. So we have minus 72 equals zero. This will be x squared plus 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times minus 6 is minus 12x. Minus 6 times 2x, that's also minus 12x. And minus 6 times minus 6 is plus 36. And we have minus 72 equals to 0. We can now simplify the like terms. x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. Minus 12x minus 12x is minus 24x. 36 minus 72 is minus 36. And then we have equal to 0. To solve this quadratic equation, we can choose between three of the most common methods. Quadratic formula, factorizing if it's possible, and completing the square. I'm going to try to factorize. First thing I'm going to do, 5 times minus 36. This is equal to minus 180. We need to find two numbers that multiply together to make minus 180, and they add up to make minus 24. Since they have to add up to minus 24, the larger from the pair of factors will have to be a negative number. 1 times minus 180 is equal to minus 180. 2 times minus 90, 3 times minus 60, 4 times minus 45, 5 times minus 36, 6 times minus 30. There are more, but I'm going to stop because 6 minus 30 is equal to minus 24. And this is exactly what we needed. Next, we are going to split the minus 24x into 6x minus 30x. Rewriting this will give us 5x squared plus 6x minus 30x minus 36 is equal to 0. We split this into two pairs and fully factorize them separately. Factorizing 5x squared plus 6x will be x 5x plus 6. Then fully factorizing minus 30x minus 36 will be minus 6 bracket open 5x plus 6. We know that we are on the right track if the brackets are the same. And finally, we have 5x plus 6 and whatever is in front of the bracket, we put inside the other bracket. We make the brackets equal to 0 to find the solutions for the x's. 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. We have 5x equals to minus 6, x is equal to minus 6 over 5. And the other bracket, x minus 6 is equal to 0, x is equal to 6. So the solutions for the x are x is equal to minus 6 over 5 and x is equal to 6. Next step, we need to find out the y's. Looking at equation 1, y is already the subject of the formula, so we are going to use y equals 2x minus 6 by replacing the x value. Multiplying out the bracket, we have minus 12 over 5 minus 6. This is minus 8.4. To find out the other corresponding y, we will do y is equal to 2 times 6 minus 6. 
12 minus 6 and y is equal to 6. And finally the solution is x is equal to minus 6 over 5. Since I have written the y as a decimal, I'm going to stick to that and I will write minus 6 over 5 as a decimal as well. And the y, the corresponding y is minus 8.4. And the other set of values are x equals 6 and y is equal to 6.